Are you guys in the mood for community goods and great barbecue? That's what you'll find at the Coker Market, located in Coker, Alabama, at the four-way intersection off of County Road 140. Their hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. until 7 p.m., and their menu items include the Midnight, which is smoked ham, smoked pork, Swiss cheese, Creole mustard, mayonnaise, and a pickle grilled on French bread. That sandwich is absolutely amazing. Make sure you go and check out the Coker Market right there at the four-way intersection in Coker for amazing food and community goods. You are about to be locked inside the Stingray Show. And coming up on this edition, we are going to be joined by Chris Phillips of SEC Unfiltered to get his take on the big matchup this evening between Tennessee and South Carolina. Plus, we are going to be recapping the Alabama loss to Florida. That's all ahead on this edition of the Stingray Show. We've got a lot to cover, so guys, let's get things rocking and rolling. Hi, this is Tim Brando with a reminder. Those of you on Tide 100.9, Look out, you're about to feel the buzz of Stingray. This is Stephen Ray, a.k.a. Stingray, coming to you live from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'm Heath Hopkins. I'm here in DeSoto County, Mississippi, right outside of Memphis, Tennessee. You know, Mark, I, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you feel that responsibility to pay it forward and give some kid a chance coming up in the ranks, kind of like Tony did for you? Why you think I'm talking to Stingray tonight? <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate no, that. No, I mean, it's, look, no. Hey, Stingray, here's the deal. When you get involved with Texas, it's like getting married to a stripper. <laughs> and, and let me explain this. It looks good, kind of sexy on, on the surface, yeah, but then you get the baggage, you get the drama, you get all that eventually comes with it. And that's what you get with Texas, and that's what the Big 12 learned. And Heath, any thoughts on our show moving forward? Hey, to everyone in Tuscaloosa listening here on Tide 100.9, with the Stingray Show, if you don't like it, you better learn to love it, because it's the best show going today, baby. Woo! Since 1999, residents of Tuscaloosa has depended on this butcher shop and grocery store. I'm talking about South's Finest Meats. With their specialty meats and fresh to frozen bulk vegetables, you can prepare delicious home-cooked meals all week long. At South's Finest Meats, customer service is their number one priority, and when you shop with them, you can expect to be treated like an MVP. Go by and check out South's Finest Meats at 3201 10th Avenue right there in Tuscaloosa. South's Finest Meats, the official sponsor of the Stingray Show. And ladies and gentlemen, with all of that, we want to welcome you inside the Hump Day Wednesday edition of the Stingray Stingray Show and Heath. Today is going to be a big day in college basketball, especially in the SEC, because this evening we've got Tennessee taking on South Carolina in a top 25 matchup that could decide the SEC standings for the championship of the regular season. Yeah, you know, it's March Madness, man. I mean, it, it starts before March. Uh, it just gets crazier in March, and it gets crazier before the big dance, bigger than the the conference tournament, bigger than the selection show. I mean, it, there's so many big moments in March. Uh, yeah. Some teams will die this week; they'll they'll have their bubble popped. Uh, you'll see more of that next week. But you're starting to see a lot of people move up or down in seeding, and these games are important. Stephen, you know, here's the fun thing: if you're a team like uh, I, I'm doing. Pull someone random like Mississippi State. They're fighting for, you know, some yeah. people say an eight or nine seed. But if you get a seven seed, you don't have to face the number one team, the number one seed that second game if you win. Right. So, you know, people are like, well, is that really a big deal if you're, you know, just to seed up or down? Yeah, it does. Yes. It's huge. And so, yeah, so many teams are playing for things. And if you're the best three seed, you might get be closer to home. If you're the worst four seed, you might be shipped out to the West Coast. If you're the worst worst two seed, you might be shipped out in the Midwest. And you're not getting to play in front of your home uh, team and your fans. So 
it's crazy. But if you're the best five seed, you might be closer to home. So everything yeah. is just crazy right now. Again, it's in the word madness. That's what it is. So I'm looking forward to tonight. Hey, we had some madness last night, Stephen. Yes. Right, with Florida and, and, and Alabama. But, yeah, Tennessee, South Carolina tonight. How can you not watch that? I mean, that that game is building up to be something massive. That crowd is going to be insane there in Columbia tonight. And, Heath, before we go any further, I do want to do something that we haven't done in quite a while, but I do think a lot of people do like it, the National Day of Today. Today is March the 6th. It is National Dress Day. For any of our female listeners out there, it is National Dress Day. It is also three food item days. It is National Oreo Cookie Day. It is National White Chocolate Cheesecake Day. And it is National Frozen Food Day. Okay. Frozen food. I love Tostino's Pizza. I love yeah. that stuff. Square pizza. I'm still mad that they went up. They, I mean, those things used to cost 50 cents when I was in college. I about had a fit when they went to 75 cents. Yeah. I'm going to say now they're like a buck 75, $2.25. I don't know, but I was like, hey, inflation. Why you got to be doing this to me? Hey, listen to this. Outside of food and the dress day, it is also National Dentist Day. So thank you to the person who keeps our pearly whites in tip-top order every six months to a year. Wow. Look at that. National Dentist Day. So here is how to observe National Dentist Day. Take some time to thank your dentist. Also, while you're at it, schedule your next preventative cleaning Pick up a new toothbrush and some floss as well. All righty then. There you go. <laughs> so National Dentist Day today, and I do want to say my dad is a well-known dentist right here in Tuscaloosa for 40 years. So hats off to all of the dentists right here in Tuscaloosa. So, Heath, let me also say this before we go to break about the game last night between Alabama and Florida. I watched every single minute of that basketball game last night. Alabama did not show up mentally or physically for that basketball game last night. Their body language just looked horrible, and it really showed for the Crimson Tide again as they've had their second loss in a row, the first time that's happened since December, and Heath, they are trending in the wrong direction going into tournament time because last night and on Saturday night, they could not drain the three-point shot, and that absolutely killed them. You know, Stephen, after you lose a game and you know that you can't finish in first, or it's going to be super, or it's going to be super hard to finish in first, you know that that situation is so hard to overcome mentally. Yes, and physically you're here at the end of the season. Your legs are shot. You know that's why the three point you know shots aren't falling. Your legs are tired, and yes. so it, it's kind of one of those things where you know no one ever wants to mail it in. No one will ever admit they're mailing it in. But don't you want to lose a couple of regular season games before the tournament than losing a game in the tournament? Yes. So I, I think right. that's kind of what we're seeing. Bama knows they're in the tournament. They're like, hey, yeah, we might be, you know, we might could fight for a two or a three seed, but, you know, we're okay for a four or five. And, you know, they might be just wanting to fall back to get some rest so they can make that deep run come March Madness. I don't know if that's the answer. Uh, I'm sure no one will ever admit that ever. But – Something's going on there, man. Hey, every team's got fatigue right now. Alabama last night from the three-point line, 5 of 23 for the Crimson Tide. And then last Saturday against Tennessee, they had similar statistics from the three-point line as Alabama went 9 of 37. That's a trend to look forward as we move forward towards the tournament time. Yeah, I look forward. We're going to have Chris Phillips on here in a minute. I can't wait to ask Chris Phillips a couple of questions about Alabama. And we're also going to get Jackson Reyes. Uh, uh, Jackson yes. there on the campus of the University of Florida. Really want to pick his brain. I- I'm sure, you know, a fourth of the student body woke up with a hangover this morning because that place yeah. was rocking last night down in Gainesville. 
So yeah, I'm sure a fourth of the student body probably skipped class this morning after after that, you know, celebration of beating Alabama last night. But yeah, I, I want to hear Jackson's thoughts. But yeah, Chris Phillips, he's going to join us here in a few minutes. So Heath, on that note, we got to take our first break, and when we come back, we are going to be joined by Chris Phillips of Southeastern Unfiltered to get his take on the SEC and that marquee matchup between South Carolina and Tennessee. That's on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Stingray Show. We will be right back with Chris Phillips of SEC Unfiltered. Citizens of West Alabama, have you heard the news? The Bank of Moundville, which was established way back in 1907, offers personal loans of all sizes, unsecured and secured with competitive interest rates. You can contact them today at 205-371-2227. Once again, that is the Bank of Moundville, 205-371-2227, or go by and see them in downtown Moundville. They are an equal housing lender and a member of the FDIC. Do you guys like to fish? I know I do. And if you have a pond or lake in your backyard that needs stocking of fish, you need to contact biologist Jeff Bagwell with Honey Hole Fisheries. He can help you stock your lake with bluegill, largemouth bass, and hybrid striped bass. You can get in touch with Jeff Bagwell and Honey Hole Fisheries at 205-799-0192. Once again, that is Honey Hole Fisheries, 205-799-0192. 0192. Contact Mr. Jeff Bagwell today and let him help you build the lake of your dreams. Do you guys dream about owning a home or a condominium down on the beautiful beaches of Alabama, say Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, or maybe even Fairhope? Then let me tell you about First Class Real Estate South Home Group's owner, Celeste Hagler. She has brokers down there in the beautiful beaches of Alabama to help you purchase the home of your dreams and to live where you love in the state of Alabama. You can contact Celeste Hagler at 20. 20- 805-861-5698. Contact Celeste Hagler today to help you live where you love in the state of Alabama. Welcome back inside the Stingray Show. Our guest this evening that we are about to get to is none other than Chris Phillips. And Chris Phillips was originally on the Spurs Up show. He has now evolved into the SEC, doing all things SEC. And we are about to bring him on to talk about that huge matchup this evening in the SEC versus number one in the SEC, Tennessee, versus South Carolina. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is our guest this evening, Mr. Chris Phillips. Chris, how are things going up there in the state of South Carolina? Stingray, Heath, appreciate you guys having me on. Things are great here. Vibes are high. And, I mean, certainly when you've got the type of product Lamont Paris and his team have put out there, there's a good reason why. Uh, I would argue tonight, I don't even think it is an argument. This is the biggest game for the men's side of things because, of course, Dawn Staley and the women, they've had huge matchups against UConn, Maryland, uh, Mm -hmm. SEC matchups, et cetera. But this is the biggest men's basketball contest probably in the history of Colonial Life Arena when you think about what's on the line and what South Carolina can accomplish. If they get a win tonight, of course, they'll have to finish the job this weekend when they take on Mississippi State and Starkville. But, I mean, to beat Tennessee, to go 2-0 and against the Vols in the regular season, right, already pulled that big upset a couple of weeks ago in Knoxville. I mean, what that would mean would be huge. So, I mean, the vibes are high and uh, certainly looking forward to a huge matchup tonight in Columbia. Chris, getting to the Gamecocks, I mentioned this earlier this week on, on our show. South Carolina was that team when we started SEC plays. Like, oh, wow, look at South Carolina. I guess they haven't played anybody. And then we get to a month into the SEC season, I'm like, well, I kept thinking that South Carolina is going to fall off, but, you know, they're about to hit a strong stretch of their schedule. They'll fall off. Here we are at the end of February, and I'm like, South Carolina's still sticking around, but, you know, we're going down the back stretch. We are here to the final games. South Carolina, if you slept on them all season, that's on you now. 
South Carolina is the team that doesn't go away. As a matter of fact, I mentioned the Stingray. I said South Carolina is like the Jason Voorhees of basketball season. They will not go away. You can't kill them off. They will not go away. They just keep coming. Huge props to South Carolina this year. What is it going to look like for the Gamecocks next year? Because they brought in a lot of transfers, a lot of guys that had a lot of minutes. What's it going to look like next year? How many of those guys are they going to keep? And obviously, the going the veteran route has surely paid off. To your point, it's funny. And I think the reason you see that South Carolina has been an underdog game after game after game, and in the Palmetto State, the question I get is, why do the Gamecocks continue to be disrespected? And, guys, I, I think this year goes to show, you know, we talk about that preseason polls are meaningless or preseason hype is meaningless. Like, it's really not, though, because I think one of the reasons South Carolina still to this point is doubted or slept on is because they were picked to finish 14th in the SEC. I mean, I think they were mm-hmm. they were looked at as not a very good basketball team. Right. So South Carolina has to do 10x what yeah, the other team has to do to gain respect, right? Because to your point, and I felt the same way. I'm like, this is crazy. I thought they would do what Ole Miss has done in SEC playoffs. Yeah, respect. that's exactly what I thought. Where they sort of leveled out. It's like, okay, you know, they've, they've been very up and down. Like, obviously, it was a nice story early, but they turned back into the pumpkin. And South Carolina just has not done that. So, I mean, right. even going to the game tonight, Tennessee is a five-and-a-half-point favorite on South Carolina's home floor, and the Gamecocks already beat the balls once this season. Now, again, I love Tennessee's basketball team. I think, you know, probably top to bottom of the most well-rounded team. And if mm-hmm. I had to pick one right now to win the SEC tournament or to go the furthest in March Madness, it'd be hard for me to not pick the Tennessee Volunteers. But still, yeah. South Carolina's been fighting that disrespect card game after game, week after week. And I think they love it. Honestly, Heath, I think Lamont Paris and company, I think they really love playing with that chip on their shoulder. And it's really easy to be, to be motivated and hyped up, if you will, when you're being doubted left and right like they are. So, I mean, to your point, it's crazy. It's just we've all been waiting for this sort of inevitable downfall, and it's just never happened. And you ask Keith, what does the future look like now for South Carolina basketball? Now, I think a lot of the way they had success this year which was going out in the transfer portal. You know, they didn't necessarily snag, I thought, Heath, a, a superstar. But you mentioned they 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 were able to get a lot of veteran guys who had played yeah. a ton of minutes, who had had success, who I think came from winning cultures and were winners. And when you get a bunch of those type of people in the locker room and get them together, that stuff is infectious. And I think that's what you've seen on the court. Because they've had a lot of moments, right, where it could have flipped the other way and a losing streak could have happened and – you know, maybe South Carolina season would be much different, but like you know, Arkansas, <laughs> right, right. And I think it's a bunch of guys again that are veteran guys that believe in Lamont Paris, what he's teaching yeah. and and what he's preaching. And so I, I think uh, going back out to the portal, getting more guys like that again, continue to recruit. It's all about talent, Jimmy's and Joes. I think they're in yeah. a good spot though. I, I believe in Lamont Paris. Chris, let's go on ahead and break down this game this evening. How do you see this one playing out? X's and O's wise between Tennessee and South Carolina on South Carolina's home court. Uh, well, Stingray, I think you got to start with Dalton Connect for Tennessee. I mean, that, that's the big, you know, he, yeah. he is, in my opinion, the best player in college basketball, really, truly, when you watch him. I mean, a walking highlight reel on a night-in, night-out basis. Now, what's scary, I think, for opponents is that Tennessee gets that big win over the weekend against Alabama. He only had 13 points in that game, right? Yeah. So it's The fact that Tennessee is so deep with the guy Ziegler and Vescovi and Adu and there's so many different guys that can hurt you on that Tennessee team. But it, it starts with, with Dalton Connect. And I thought they did a pretty good job in that first matchup of playing him really tight, being physical, limiting him. He came on really late in that game to I think make that game maybe even closer than it was. But uh, you got to limit him. That's where it starts. I think BJ Mack and Josh Gray for South Carolina have to be big down low. Um, it seems as if when the Gamecocks are playing their best basketball, I think B.J. Mack is a really big part of that. And Josh Gray has been a really nice player this year. Also, Michi Johnson, right? He's one of your best players. And I know it's a, a different hero for South Carolina, it seems like, every night. But Michi's going to be key for them. I think Taylon Cooper maybe went off in that last Tennessee game. He'll be big. Miles Studi is one. Had a really good game against Tennessee and Knoxville. So it's going to take a team effort, no doubt. You know Tennessee's going to bring the physicality. You know what you're getting the balls and a and a Rick Barnes coach team. I don't know if you asked me to make a pick or not. I, I'm really on the fence with this one because I've, I'm one, honestly, I've doubted South Carolina all season. 
I feel like almost out of a respect thing, I should pick the Gamecocks to pull the upset. Colonial Life Arena is going to be a madhouse. I mean, yeah, it's well. going to be truly insane. So, you know, I, I'm going to, I'll go with South Carolina to pull the upset. It, it really does feel like, guys, they're this team of destiny. They're kind of this, like, I don't want to say Cinderella because, you know, a Cinderella would be you finish middle of the conference or, you know, you're on the bubble, yeah. you get in the tournament, and you make an unprecedented run. I mean, it's Tom, like he said, that we really put respect on South Carolina and talk about them as, okay, they're deservingly one of the three or four best teams in the conference. Like, they are. They've earned it. They've beaten everybody. They've beaten Tennessee. They've beaten Kentucky. I know their losses have been ugly. I think that's one thing that people really hold against them, those losses to Bama, to Auburn. But, I mean, those teams, they beat a lot of people that way. So, um, South Carolina, underdogs yet again. CLA will be rocking. They've had magic there. They've played really well. They've already beaten Tennessee once. I think they'll come in supremely confident, and I think it'll be a great game. But I, I tell you, man, it's a magical season in Columbia, and I don't think it's stopping tonight. Briefly, before we go to break, going ahead and preview South Carolina at Mississippi State Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, – isn't it crazy, guys? We were talking about this game months ago. That was the SEC opener, yeah. and now it's going to be the SEC closer. I didn't think about that, but you're right, yeah. yeah for, for both of these schools. <laughs> and it's interesting to think how differently both of these teams look since then. Um, yeah. Because I, re- I recall that game for South Carolina. It was like, okay, can you can you set the tone in SEC play and maybe set yourself up to win, you know, five or six games in conference play and have an okay year and – I mean, little did we know, right? Nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, that was a really tightly contested game at CLA, though. I think obviously South Carolina has has gotten a lot better and gained a lot of confidence since then. I know Mississippi State is sort of a roller coaster ride, and they're fighting for their tournament lives. I know they're. I think they're projected to be in right now. So, but Starkville's a tough place to play, man. I mean, it just is. Starkville is is, is crazy. Stark Vegas when it gets rocking, it's it's really hard to come out of there with a victory and. Um, you know, I, I love Mississippi State's team, and I think it's it's a prime place for an upset. So I'd lean South Carolina, but I wouldn't be surprised by anything in that game. So, Chris, hold that thought because we are up against another break, and when we come back, we are going to be talking a little diamond of SEC baseball. That's on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Stingray Show. We will be right back with Chris Phillips. Strange Brew Coffee House continues to roll out brand new drinks, including the Yosemite, which is white chocolate and roasted marshmallow. Doesn't that sound amazing? You can find Strange Brew at 1101 University Boulevard right there on the strip at the University of Alabama campus. And hey, did you know that you can get Strange Brew delivered to your door? Check out strangebrewcoffeehouse.com for all the Strange Brew's bags of coffee, K-Cups, mugs, shirts, and a whole lot more right there at strangebrewcoffeehouse.com. Are you guys in the mood for community goods and great barbecue? That's what you'll find at the Coker Market, located in Coker, Alabama, at the four-way intersection off of County Road 140. Their hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. until 7 p.m., and their menu items include the Midnight, which is smoked ham, smoked pork, Swiss cheese, Creole mustard, mayonnaise, and a pickle grilled on French bread. That sandwich is absolutely amazing. Make sure you go and check out the Coker Market right there at the four-way intersection in Coker for amazing food and community goods. Your life can change on a dime, and if you are relocating for your job up to the Rocket City of Huntsville, the fastest growing city in the state of Alabama, you need to contact Celeste Tegler of First Class Real Estate South Home Group. She has brokers all over North Alabama to help you get settled with buying a new home in North Alabama. You can contact her at 205-861-5698. Once again, that is Celeste Tegler, 205-861-5698. 698. Contact Celeste Hagler today to live where you love in the state of Alabama, even in the rocket city of Huntsville. Want to know what's going on with the Crimson Tide? Download the Tide 100.9 app today. Ah! 
Citizens of West Alabama, have you heard the news? The Bank of Moundville, which was established way back in 1907, offers personal loans of all sizes, unsecured and secured with competitive interest rates. You can contact them today at 205-371-2227. Once again, that is the Bank of Moundville, 205-371-2227, or go by and see them in downtown Moundville. They are an equal housing lender and a member of the FDIC. Welcome back inside the Sting Ray Show. Hope all is well with you. Our guest this evening is Chris Phillips from SEC Unfiltered. And Chris, I do want to switch gears and talk about the college baseball and SEC. And last night, Heath and Chris Texas A&M moved to 12-0 and with a very huge win over their rivals, the Longhorns of Texas, in a 9-2 to win over the Longhorns. Chris, give us your thoughts on Texas A&M so far this season on the Diamond. Yeah, guys, Jim Schlossnagel's got a really good club in College Station this year. You know, I think that's one that, you know, we get so lost caught and caught up talking about the, the LSUs and the Floridas and, and the, the Arkansas of the world, and, and deservingly so, right? Those are great ball clubs. But Texas A&M, I think, is as dangerous as any team in the SEC. And yeah. the SEC West, right, the, the final year of any type of divisions or anything in any SEC sport. Um, but, I mean, you look, guys, it starts with their lineup. Obviously, Jace Lavalette, Braden Montgomery, uh, two of the best sluggers in college baseball. And that's a really good place to start and a great foundation for your lineup. They got Ryan Targotch. In the infield, who's certainly the heart and soul of that team and a captain on that team. And I, I think, guys, what what's really encouraging, if you're a Texas A&M fan early on, because, you know, I, I think you asked me this question a week ago. You know, it's it's kind of tough to get super fired up about some of the competition that some of these teams have played. Yeah. You know, but going in a tournament play over this past weekend, racking up a couple nice wins, obviously going, obviously going undefeated, and then last night taking down Texas. But the pitching staff, the pitching has been so much better than it was. Uh, last season to this point. Again, I know it's early. I cannot wait to watch Texas A&M Florida next weekend to open up SEC play. But yes. uh, excited about the Aggies. And I, and I wonder, guys, all the great rivalries in the SEC, where does A&M Texas now rank now that Texas mm-hmm. is going to be in the SEC? I, I just cannot wait to watch more of Aggies and Longhorns in every single sport. We got Chris Phillips here with the SEC Unfiltered on the Stingray Show. Chris, what's a bigger surprise? Kentucky at 11 and one or Georgia at 11 and one this year? Cause I'm still kind of shocked. I thought both would be good, but I didn't think they would start this hot. I'm going to go with the Georgia Bulldogs. I know, with, I, with Kentucky, you know, again, guys, I, I look at, and I know they, they, they've had tournament play as well, you know, but I look at mostly their schedule, who they put. I'm, I'm still not a hundred percent sure. Right. On Kentucky yet. Nick Minji owns club, although I, I would say that, you know, you never sleep on those guys. I mean, last year, I don't think. Much of us had high expectations or high hopes for them. And sure enough, Kentucky found themselves in a super regional. But you look at what Georgia's doing, Wes Johnson, first year head coach, right? Literally no expectations. We knew they how they had Charlie Condon and the rest was, you know, figuring it out from there. But, you know, Georgia goes on the road essentially and, and takes two from Georgia Tech and, and uh should have been three, right? The fact that Friday game got called in like the middle of the fifth inning and it doesn't count as an official game is is crazy to me. But uh Georgia's been wildly impressive, right? The way they're yeah. starting to pick one of the best in the SEC early on in uh, with the long ball, with home runs. I mean, again, Charlie Condon has been incredible. He's seeing a beach ball right now. I mean, guys, this is another one of those things, right? We talked about earlier about the SEC basketball schedule. Now, okay, that was the non-conference. Let's see what happens when you get to conference play. I think Georgia is going to be similar, right? I'm really intrigued to see if they can carry this over and, and keep yeah. up. You know, keep up this hot play going into the, the conference slate, which is really where we separate the men from the boys. But I would say Georgia has been the bigger positive surprise. Kentucky, obviously, off to a great start. But, man, the Georgia Bulldogs, I actually went to Foley Field and checked them out. They're a lot of fun to watch. They can swing it as well as anybody. And I, I'm not, you know, guys, I, I'm not sure they're going to really be a 16-14 a and 14 or 17-13 and 13 SEC club this year. But I think they're going to be one of those teams you do not want to see on any weekend, and I think they're going to be one of the most dangerous teams in the SEC. And, guys, I mean, I think early on I feel confident in saying they'll be poised to make a run at the postseason, which 
would be a massively successful season in year one of West Johnson. I'll add to this. I don't think any team wants to see Georgia as a number two in their regional. I don't think any – I think that's where Georgia will be, a two somewhere in someone's regional. I don't think anybody wants to see them. Yeah. No, I mean, certainly. I mean, I, I think Georgia's a team, again, you put them in any other conference, and we might be talking about the Georgia Bulldogs being a surprise to, to win the entire league with the SEC. And that's one of the funny things, guys, about, you know, I, I drop weekly power rankings – Mm-hmm. And it's inevitable you're going to piss somebody off because, I mean, the SEC guys, the team that's ranked eighth in the power rankings could be the eighth team, eighth team in Omaha. Like, I mean, it's 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 that deep of a league. So, um, no, I, I love Georgia's club, man. We'll see if they can pitch enough. I think that's going to be the big question. But, man, they got one of the best lineups, I think, in the conference. All right. So, Chris, you have your pulse on South Carolina because you live in South Carolina this past weekend, the Gamecocks lost this series to Clemson, and there were a lot of talks from and chirping from South Carolina fans that their coach may not be the right guy to get them to where they need to be in college baseball. Your thoughts on the South Carolina fans saying that and the series versus Clemson this past weekend? Well, I'll start with the Mark Kingston chatter, Stingray. Thoughts on the fans saying that? I mean, I'm not surprised at all. Um, the expectations in Columbia are what they are. I mean, I, I think this, that, you know, you got to keep realistic expectations in college right. baseball. I'm sure against Stingray, you guys feel this with the Mississippi State fan base that you're not going to go to Omaha every year. I mean, it's, it's right. just so hard. Like, it makes – They expect to. <laughs> right, right. And, I mean, I think having those expectations – from the standpoint of, like, that should be the goal is fair. But I think also you have to realize that, I mean, <clears throat> if you go to Omaha, you know, five times out of ten over the course of a decade, like, that's a great Pretty awesome. decade. Like, what Kevin O'Sullivan has done at Florida is insane. Yeah. The uh, You know, the, the frequency in which they've gotten to Omaha. But, you know, the expectations are what they are. And I, and I think what you're seeing, guys, and the chatter you're hearing is from a fan base that is just starving to get back. I mean, guys – It's been over a decade since South Carolina was last in Omaha. 2012, you got to go all the way back to since they've even gone back. So, um, you know, I'm not surprised by the chatter. I don't blame people necessarily for the chatter because he's been there since 2017. And I think, guys, what what really irks people is I believe he and Tony Vitello were hired at the same time. And we all see what Tennessee baseball is now and the way that they're revered and talked about and – you know, where they're ranked, and I think people are disgruntled with where Gamecocks baseball is, at least until they get back to Omaha. I mean, that's going to be the only thing, I think, that settles the fan base down. So, I mean, admittedly, guys, I'm not a huge Mark Kingston guy. You know, I think mm-hmm. the best thing he ever did was hire Monty Lee, uh, the former Clemson head coach, former Gamecock assistant. I think he was one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest catalysts to their turnaround swinging the bats last year. Uh, but early on, guys, unfortunately, again, it's a pair of one-run losses, right, against a team in Clemson yeah. that's now ranked in the top ten. Like, let's not overreact and say South Carolina's in the gutter and they're gonna they're gonna be one of the worst teams in the league. But I do think that some of their holes were exposed against Clemson, um, and I think early on, and I know a lot of Gamecock folks have, have expressed this to me that it feels like a a Mark Kingston lineup early, and what it means by that is. There's going to be power, there's going to be home runs, but it's going to be a lot of strikeouts, and we're seeing that. And it's going to be a lot of runners left in scoring position. Mm-hmm. South Carolina went like four for 27 with runners in scoring yeah. against Clemson, right? So it's not about hitting, it's about timely hitting. Uh, also, guys, I oh, think they're yes. on the mound. I mean, with their starting pitching, I mean, they're, they're not able right now to get four or five innings or any more yeah. than that out of their starters. Uh, and so I think going into SEC play, like this is a huge next week or so for South Carolina baseball, right? You got the win last night over the Citadel. Um, you got another midweek game tonight. But, like, you got a lot of loose ends that you yeah. got to get figured out. Because once you get an SEC play, guys, that ain't the time to figure it out, right? And you start out first series is at Ole Miss and Oxford. I know Ole Miss isn't exactly what they've been, but, like, that's not a fun place to go play. That's not a place right. to go to be figuring things out and, you know, who we're going to start on right. Saturday, who we're going to start on Sunday. So, you know, I think South Carolina has got the talent, the potential to still be a, a top 15 club in college baseball and, and be hosting a regional. But I, I just think they've got some things they really need to shore up, both on the pitching side of things and swinging the stick. Pitching, figuring out who their top three guys in the rotation, continue to establish roles in the lineup, guys. I mean, you just got to have somebody contribute outside of Ethan Petrie and Cole Messina. you, you got to have some consistent contributors. So, um, 
a lot of questions for sure. And guys, if Mark Kingston and company, if they don't make a super regional this year, there's going to be a lot of people proclaiming yeah. changes needed in Columbia. So, Chris, thank you as always for joining us. Good luck with SEC Unfiltered, and we will definitely catch up with you later on down the road to talk maybe South Carolina basketball in the big dance and, of course, the Gamecocks on the diamond. Stephen Heath, always a pleasure, guys. I appreciate you having me. Be good, Thank Chris. You. Thank you, sir. Appreciate y'all. We'll talk soon. So, Heath, that is going to wrap up the talk of South Carolina and SEC baseball. And, of course, at the South Carolina versus Tennessee matchup this evening. When we come back, we are going to get into the Florida Gators win versus Alabama last night. That is on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Stingray Show. We will be right back with the Gators talk. Since 1999, residents of Tuscaloosa has depended on this butcher shop and grocery store. I'm talking about South's Finest Meats. With their specialty meats and fresh to frozen bulk vegetables, you can prepare delicious home-cooked meals all week long. At South's Finest Meats, customer service is their number one priority, and when you shop with them, you can expect to be treated like an MVP. Go by and check out South's Finest Meats at 3201 10th Avenue right there in Tuscaloosa. South's Finest Meats, the official sponsor of the Stingray Show. Residents of Tuscaloosa, are you guys upsizing, downsizing, looking for college housing, or even relocating for your job right here to Tuscaloosa. If that's the case, then you need to contact Celeste Hagler, owner and operator of First Class Real Estate South Home Group. She can help you with the buying, selling, and investment needs throughout the state of Alabama. You can contact Celeste at 205-861-5698. Reach out to Celeste again at 205-861-5698 and schedule a consultation to discuss your real estate goals and to live where you love in the state of Alabama. Are you guys in the mood for community goods and great barbecue? That's what you'll find at the Coker Market, located in Coker, Alabama, at the four-way intersection off of County Road 140. Their hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. until 7 p.m., and their menu items include the Midnight, which is smoked ham, smoked pork, Swiss cheese, Creole mustard, mayonnaise, and a pickle grilled on French bread. That sandwich is absolutely amazing. Make sure you go and check out the Coker Market right there at the four-way intersection in Coker for amazing food and community goods. Since 1999, residents of Tuscaloosa has depended on this butcher shop and grocery store. I'm talking about South's Finest Meats. With their specialty meats and fresh to frozen bulk vegetables, you can prepare delicious home-cooked meals all week long. At South's Finest Meats, customer service is their number one priority, and when you shop with them, you can expect to be treated like an MVP. Go by and check out South's Finest Meats at 3201 10th Avenue right there in Tuscaloosa. South's Finest Meats, the official sponsor of the Stingray Show. Welcome back, SEC fans. You're here on the Stingray Show. I'm Heath Hopkins, joined with Stephen Ray. We got a very special guest. He's a reporter for the independent Florida Gator and he has uh, been on our show multiple times. He's now a friend of the show, Stephen. I think this is his third time. Let's welcome our good friend Jackson Reyes. Jackson, how are things in Gainesville, Florida after that crazy game last night? Uh, just want to say real quick, thank you for having me. And, uh, to uh, answer your question, things are going great right now. Um, it's been a pretty great season for Florida this year and, uh, to cap off the the final home game senior night with a you know massive victory over Alabama, um, and also you know they finish off their home schedule fourteen and one their only loss coming to Kentucky so wow it's been a great time for Florida basketball this year. 
Can you go on ahead and kind of give us your thoughts on this Florida basketball team? Because they're up and down, up and down, up and down, and you can't really seem to get a pulse on them, especially after they were playing really well and then they lost to South Carolina on Saturday. And then, of course, they had that huge win last night. Kind of give us your thoughts on the pulse of this basketball team. Yeah, so I'd say my main takeaways from this team is uh, they're they're extremely balanced. Uh, Todd Golden uh, brought in two very experienced guards to uh, you know bolster his backcourt with uh, Walter Clayton and Zion Pullen, and they've played like two of the best guards in the whole country. Uh, Zion Pullen is incredible at protecting the ball. Walter Clayton is a flamethrower, and you know the ways he can score the ball. Um, and outside of just those two, you still have Riley Kugel coming off the bench. You have Will Richard uh, providing a shot from the perimeter. You have other tranches that they brought in, Tyree Samuel, Micah Hanlocked, and um, just so many ways for this team to score, and that's made them so uh, you know tough to defend. And that's why they've had one of the best offensive, according to you know most metrics. And then just watching them, it's, it's pretty evident that that's the case. Um, and then you talk to some of that up and down. I'd say one of their biggest struggles is a uh, you know. They've been just an okay defensive team this year at times. And, you know, in particular with that South Carolina game and some of these other games where even though they've still won, they've blown big leads. Uh, for whatever reason, their offense kind of struggles when defense is switched to a zone. Uh, the South okay. Carolina game was a prime example. Florida was up, I think, 12 at one point. That was like their largest lead of the game. And South Carolina switches from man defense to a zone. Uh, Florida kind of falls apart for a little while, struggles to score baskets. You know, they finally get it together, but it's a little, you know, a little bit too late at that point as yeah. South Carolina took them down. So uh, I would say as good as they are this year, you know, to be 21-8, and eight, um, that has been one of the few flaws. So, Jackson, obviously we've got one game left in the regular season this weekend and then SEC tournament play is next weekend up in Nashville. Going ahead and give us your thoughts on this Florida Gator basketball team as they head into the tournament. How do they run? Do you think that they can make up in Nashville? Uh, I think they're in a great position going forward, going into the tournament. They'll close out their season with Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. um, it is a road game, but they should win that game. They should be favored. <laughs> so, you know, going into the SEC tournament, you're 22 and 8. Um, if there was some things fall their way, uh, depending on how this final weekend goes, they could get into the top four, which would mean a double right. buy. And, you know, if you can get that double buy, then, you know, that really opens up the way for them to, you know, make it as far as even winning the whole thing. Yeah. Um, if not, if they don't get that double buy, I think it's a little tougher. Um, but they can definitely make some noise. Um, you know, looking at the standings, they've beat pretty much all of the top teams except for South Carolina and Tennessee. I think if they run into Tennessee, that'll be the one matchup that will be, you know, sort of a tough out if they want to try and win the whole thing. But looking at everybody else, they've they've beaten everybody else for the most part, Kentucky, uh, Auburn, yeah. uh, Alabama last night. So I don't think they're going to be afraid in any of these matchups, uh, so to say. So I, I definitely think they're in a great spot going forward, especially going into the SEC tournament. You know, Jackson, looking at uh, March Madness coming up, whether it be the SEC tournament or when we're all filling out our brackets later this month, <laughs> is it safe to say teams that play a lot of zone could be a big problem for Florida, or is it just when they switch to zone? Because I liked what you said earlier in this segment about that, that Florida, when they go from man to zone, Florida kind of falls apart for a little bit. Is it just zone in general, or is it the transition to zone? I want to say it's sort of the transition to zone. Okay. I think Florida can get in such a groove offensively going against the man defense, and then all of a sudden this, this, throw, this change is thrown at them, and they don't really know how to handle it. Another example is the Georgia game. The first time they played them, they mm -hmm. were up by 20 in that game. Georgia switches to a zone defense. They're mixing things up between man and zone, and then they – Below a twenty-point lead. Obviously, they ultimately, you know, still won it in overtime, but um, mm -hmm. that sort of changed helped Georgia get back into the game. So, Jackson, finally, I want to get to college baseball and especially the diamond for the Gators. They sit here with a record of eight and three. What can we expect from the Florida Gators when SEC play starts next weekend? I think they're going to look really good. Um, 
should be a strong year. You know, obviously they didn't get the season started off on the right foot, losing that season opener to St. John's, and then the rest of the series is canceled. Um, obviously, you know, maybe you'd like to have a little bit better start than eight and three, but I still think this team just has a ton of talent. Jack Caglione is obviously one of the best players in the country. Um, I think if their rotation continues to play really well, um, they have a lot of young talent there. Um, I think they can be really good. I, I think my, my one concern for this team is the bullpen. That was my main concern last season. And I think even the season before that, um, I've always been a little worried about their bullpen arms, but hopefully this year, um, it's a lot of veteran guys who hopefully like, like, like for now, for example, who, who've put it together and can, uh, help lead Florida to, uh, actually winning it this year rather than how big. Is Jack Caglion in person? Because he looks like a monster on television. Oh, he yeah. just looks like a behemoth of a human. Ben McDonald was on the show last week, and he said, man, he's built like a linebacker. But well, I mean, how tall is this guy, really? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know how – I don't know his exact measure. I want to say he's like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, something like that. I mean, his I, I don't, I don't know sure. he's only. Huge. I mean, he's a big dude. Yeah, he's a, he's a beast. Yeah, and he's fun to watch play. He, oh, hey, yeah. that's a fun question. Do you think Florida Gator fans enjoy watching him spin it off the mound or, or crushing it at the plate? Ooh, that's a tough one. I got to say probably probably crushing off the plate. I I, th- I think everybody loves a good home run, and yeah. he's one of the best at just yeah, he is. smashing a moonshot. So. Yeah, I was going to say he had, what, 24 homers? 20, how many home runs did he have last year? Ah, oh, that's another one off the top of my head. So, uh, it's twenty something. I know that. Yeah, I know it was awesome. It, it was so pretty Jackson, incredible. To see. Look, man, thank you as always for joining us. Have a wonderful week down there in Gainesville, and we will definitely catch up with you later on for the SEC tournament and, of course, SEC baseball. Of course, thank you for having me, Jackson. Be good, brother. Thank you, guys, too. Now, Jackson Gray is from the Independent Florida Gator. Always fun to have Jackson on. So, Heath, that is going to wrap up another edition of the Stingray Show. We hope that you guys have thoroughly enjoyed it. When we come back tomorrow evening, we are going to have another great show on tap for you guys, and that's going to be former LSU quarterback Josh Booty will join us on the Thursday edition of the Stingray Show. Heath, we got to get out of here because we're on a time crunch. We will see you guys on down the line, and on down the line is tomorrow evening. Right back here on the Stingray Show, we are done. Are you guys in the mood for community?